All right, today's episode, I'm going to make a braised short rib stuffed potato. If you don't know how to make short ribs, you can go back to my surf and turf meats soup and sandwich episode, and that has all the details of how to braise short ribs of beef. This particular one, I'm already braised. So, already cooled them and shredded them. I'm going to saute them in a pan with a little bit of oil and sort of twice cook them, make them crispy. I'm gonna then stew it with tomato sauce. I'm not gonna insult you or your grandmother by telling you how to make marinara sauce. It's the same thing with everybody, but, but everybody has their own little techniques. I eat garlic shallots, oregano, chili pepper flakes, San Marzano, diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce. And then I'm gonna finish it with olives, capers, and dried cranberries. That's gonna give sort of a picadillo effect. Picadillo is savory ground beef that's studded with all the ingredients that I just told you about. But before that, I'm going to take the potato. We're gonna peel an Idaho potato. The reason why I use the Idaho potatoes is because they're a dry baking potato. And you're gonna need that in order to hold this whole short rib stuffed potato together. So I already took and peeled. I cooked a potato in salted water about 15 minutes. You don't want to cook it all the way through so it's mushy like mashed potatoes. You want to kind of leave it al dente, if you will. And then I'm going to grate it on my cheese grater and then show you how to stuff it. Hot saute pan, little bit of oil, take our braised shredded short ribs and gently put them into the oil. Ultimately, I'm looking for a little bit of crispy, let the fat in the short ribs render out so that we get a nice crispy crunch. See that, see all that nice color? Crispy. Now, I'm gonna take my grandma's tomato sauce and we're gonna stew the short ribs in it. You don't want too much tomato sauce because you don't want this thing, this filling to be too wet or else it's gonna seep outside the potato and we're gonna have one big messy fried piece of mush. So we're just gonna toss that around. A little bit of salt, pepper. I'm gonna mix it up real fast. You don't wanna add too much salt because don't forget we have to finish it with our capers, olives, and all that is salt. I'm gonna take our mixture of olives, capers, and dried cranberries. The sweetness is gonna offset the saltiness and the richness. Mix that up real nice. If you could smell what I'm smelling and me and the camera dude right now is smelling this, woo, you will be unbelievably excited. Finished, ready to roll. So I'm gonna just pop it on a plate and lay it flat on a plate so that it cools as fast as possible into the fridge. I'm gonna take my box grater and just grate the potato. That's what a potato looks like when it's grated. See that nice and fluffy. Salt and pepper. I'm gonna make a ball out of it. Not too tight. You want this ball to be the size of your hand. All right, now that we have that prepped and ready, we're gonna take this potato and we're gonna smash it. Don't really matter what it looks like now because we're gonna form it into a ball and then we can, you know, we can manipulate it like a meatball. We take a little bit, we take enough of the filling and we ball it up and stick it right in the center. Make sure you get all the filling, the short ribs, the capers, the cherries, everything, the cranberries, so that you get the beauty of the whole entire dish. You wanna offset the sweet and the salty and the rich and the tomatoes and the flavor and the potatoes. So now that I have that in my hand still in a well, I'm gonna wrap the potato around it you want to get as much of the filling inside the potato, but it's okay if it, if, if it peeks through a little bit. Because now we're gonna bread it, a classic breading mixture. And because maybe we'll have a friend over or that's not gonna be big enough for you, I'm gonna make another one. Because I didn't eat breakfast today. So, yeah, that's it, just like that. Keep the gloves on. I have all-purpose flour. I have cracked, whipped eggs. 
and my Japanese breadcrumbs. Make a line, make an assembly line. You're gonna take the potato and gently roll it around in a flour. Make sure that you have the flour on the whole entire potato. Before you put it into the eggs, you wanna just kinda of pat it off or else the eggs won't stick to the, the clumps of flour. See that, nice, just dusted. Then we put it into our egg. I'm gonna take the other one because I'm in a groove here and do the same thing. Oh shit, no problem. Like nothing ever happened. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna roll it around in the egg so that it's completely covered in egg. And then finally, our Japanese breadcrumbs. Get fancy, oh, 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 look at that. Bam, I mean, boom. Don't wanna insult nobody who's not on TV no more. Just press them in there. Press them in there good so the whole thing is covered. One more time, no big deal. Now you wanna let this sit about five minutes because you want the breadcrumbs to adhere to the eggs. That way when you go and fry it, it doesn't fall off. Our balls <laughs> have set with the breadcrumbs. Now we're gonna fry it. We're gonna fry it for around eight minutes because we want the outside to be golden brown and the inside to be hot. Look at this golden ball of beautifulness. And I'm gonna use some of my salad dressing, white balsamic and garlic vinaigrette. I've got to show you the inside of this thing. Look at that little beauty. Stuffed potato with braised short ribs of beef.